Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen zum heutigen Vortrag mit Film. Zugleich die Finissage zu unserer Sonderausstellung Bewusste Halluzinationen der filmische Surrealismus. Die Ausstellung hat Ihnen in den vergangenen viereinhalb Monaten Einblicke in die Filmfaszination der frühen Surrealisten gegeben. Und ich freue mich sehr, zum Abschluss heute Abend einen Blick über unseren selbstgewählten Tellerrand hinauswerfen zu können. Mit Dimitri Kirsanovs Film Rapt von 1935 zeigen wir ein selten zu sehendes Meisterwerk aus den 1930er Jahren. Der Film, damit verrate ich wahrscheinlich nicht zu viel, ist nicht surrealistisch. Warum er aber im Kontext der Ausstellung dennoch aufschlussreiche Perspektiven im Verhältnis der verschiedenen Avantgarde-Bewegungen zueinander eröffnet, erläutert uns heute Abend Dr. Olivier Salazar-Ferrer. Er ist Dozent für Französisch an der University of Glasgow. Seine Forschungsarbeit konzentriert sich auf die französische Literatur des 20. Jahrhunderts und die Wechselbeziehungen zwischen literarischem Schreiben, Philosophie und den bildenden Künsten. Sein besonderes Interesse dabei gilt den europäischen Avantgarde-Bewegungen. Er ist unter vielem anderen Autor der Monographien Benjamin Fondin von 2004 sowie von Benjamin Fondin et la Revolte Existentielle von 2007. Zwei Publikationen über das Leben und die Arbeit des Avantgarde-Dichters, Philosophen und vor allem auch Cineasten Benjamin Fondin, der das Drehbuch für den heutigen Film schrieb. Ich begrüße also herzlich Olivier Salazar Ferrer und wünsche uns allen einen schönen Abend. Please, welcome Olivier Salazar Ferrer. Good evening. I'm very pleased to be here and to have this uh, possibility to talk about uh, Dimitri Kersanov and Benjamin Fondane. Uh, I had prepared uh, the first part of my talk on uh, surrealism in cinema, but I think we have to uh, start immediately on uh, Benjamin Fondane and uh, this film. So uh, we'll, s we'll uh, see this evening uh, Rapt. He was uh, made in 33 in Switzerland, in the mountains of the Valais, and uh, in October 33. And uh, Benjamin Fondan is uh, did only the adaptation of uh, Charles Ferdinand Ramu Uh, La Guerre des Races, uh, and Kirsanov did the film, he is the director of the film. I have to say immediately that this film is not a surrealist film. How, however, he has a, a very interesting relationship to avant-garde and surrealism, and perhaps, perhaps Dadaism. Uh, Fondan had, was a poet, philosopher, dramatist coming from Romania. He was, he was in Paris in 23, joining the uh, margins of the Dadaism in Paris, but he was not a Dadaist. He was not a surrealist and Uh, slowly, from 23 to 29, he became the enemy of André Breton and the Surrealist theory. However, he was very interested in the application of the cinematic techniques to poetry. The fact is that uh, the cinema uh, had the power to transform the stylistic resources of poetry. You know certainly Blaise Sandrard's attempt to find in cinema new techniques in the cutting, for example, to 
built new poems in the poem Kodak, for example. Uh, so Fondane uh, published the famous Cine poem in 28, uh, a kind of uh, scenario poem. Uh, of course, this poem is not available for real cinema. The reader has to project the film on the screen of his or her imagination. This is a inner cinema or internal cinema, dream-like cinema. And uh, the Ciné Poem of Benjamin Fondane, published in 28 with uh, three photographs of Man Ray, uh, are quite, quite significant in the evolution of the relationship between cinema and poetry in Europe. However, Benjamin Fondane's dream is to uh, make real films. And uh, for quite a long time, from 28 to 34, approximately, he was a technician in the Paramount in Paris, in Joinville, Le Pont Studios, uh, to make dialogues and small works. And in uh, 33, he had this possibility to work on a real film with uh, Dimitri Kersanov. So Dimitri Kersanov is uh, completely forgotten, unfortunately, today, but he was uh, quite uh, important in the avant-garde, uh, the cinematic avant-garde. He did, uh, in 26, uh, a very interesting film, Ménil Montant, and in 28, Brume d'automne. They are experimental films, silent films, of course. And in fact, uh, Kirsanov is not belonging to the surrealist group, is not Dadaist. In fact, uh, Kirs Dimitri Kirsanov uh, is uh, willing to do uh, a kind of musical visual score. The music has to provide the forms of the cutting. And the, uh, uh, Kersanov himself is a musician, is a cellist. And uh, he, the first idea is to build uh, experimental films in line with uh, the impressionist cinema of Deluc, Marcel Lherbier, Epstein, and Germain Dulac is uh, following, in fact, the two principles of the impressionism, photogeny and subjectivity. Uh, however, this time we've wrapped, it is a completely different situation because this film will be an adaptation of Charles Ferdinand Ramu, La Séparation des Races. Uh, so, uh, Ramu, uh, you know certainly the sweet uh, writer, uh, Charles Ferdinand Ramu. Ramu's idea was to uh, build a film in including the elements, the archaic forces of the mountain, sky, water, thunder, fog, rain. Uh, in, uh, for Ramu, the mountain was a character in the film. And uh, like uh, in the Jean Giono uh, novels in France, for example, Ramu uh, is working on the elements. Uh, it is a new conception of uh, violent nature. And uh, of course, here, Frappt is a tragedy, uh, a human tragedy in the mountains. So we've got here a realism, and absolutely not a surrealism. The plot is a classic tragedy, opposing two valleys, two villages, two languages, French and German. A story of love, jealousy, 
and fate, attraction and repulsion. However, the possibility to uh, shot this film was very interesting for Kirsanov and Fondan because it's the first uh, sound film of Kirsanov. And Benjamin Fondan, uh, in uh, the Écrit pour le cinéma, the writings on cinema uh, that we, we published uh, in France uh, with Verdier, uh, Benjamin Fondan uh, tried to uh, find a new relationship between sound and image. Before uh, Jean-Luc Godard, uh, Marguerite Duras, uh, or Jean Cocteau, even if I know that uh, between Cocteau and the Surrealist there was a full gap, uh, Benjamin Fondan is looking for a filmic the filmic possibilities of sound. And he, he don't want to come back to the drama, to the psychological plot of theater. And uh, uh, it is a new technical investigation, exploration in the image sound. So Kirsanov will ask to two composers, Arthur Honegger and Arthur Oere, to work on the sound track and in, uh, in close relationship with the uh, photographer of the film and himself, the director. This is why this film is very relevant and significant for the avant-garde, because the avant-garde, uh, the avant-garde Dadaist or Surrealist films were, uh, had this passion for the silent film, because the language was a form of the rationality of the consciousness. And to stay in the uh, evolution of the silent film was to explore the unconscious desire, freedom, the, and to overcome the limits of the rationality. The sound suddenly is a terrible event because with the sound, it is the social language. It is uh, suddenly, we've got on uh, suddenly the new, the classic form of dialogues, of organization of the reality, the organization of time, of temporality. So the project of uh, Kirsanov and Fondan, with Oire and Honegger, is to find a new association between the sound and the image. So you will see that in Rapt. Uh, so uh, I would like to show some photographs of the, on, the, on this uh, film because uh, they are quite interesting uh, to understand uh, the film itself. Uh, you'll see now the producer of the film, Stefan Marcus on the left and Kirsanov on the right. And the camera de Vry, it was a very simple <laughs> the material to uh, film the camera de Vry. Uh, it's a famous uh, camera at this time. Uh, you see uh, in interesting view of uh, the main uh, actor uh, in, uh, is playing Firmin. Uh, the, the name of this actor was uh, Vital Gémon, he's completely forgotten today. And uh, she, it is, is with uh, Corinne Abbey, the script girl of the film. And there was a, a quite interesting love story between Vital and Corinne Abbey. Corinne Abbey was 18 at this moment, but she became a very famous poet and writer in Switzerland and a friend of Benjamin Fondan as well. Uh, here, interesting uh, photograph as well, where you see uh, Benjamin Fondan and Charles Ferdinand Ramu uh, discussing in the village of Lens, 
the film was shot in this small village with the inhabitants of the, uh, this uh, village and Kirsanov in Black Suite. This is Corinna B as well. Uh, so uh, this film is quite interesting because you, uh, Kirsanov is using some techniques from Eisenstein and the Russian cinema. And a beautiful scene is when uh, Nadia Sibirskaya, the fiancé of Firmin, is running on the road. This is a fantastic moment, you'll see, uh, of the film. A pure tragedy uh, in movement. And uh, the white face, black eyes, and the expressionist uh, uh, expressions of the face of Nadia Sibirskaya are very interesting. There is a, a, obviously a link with the silent uh, cinema uh, the classic silent cinema. Here you see uh, Charles Ferdinand Ramu. Charles Ferdinand Ramu is uh, playing a countryman uh, or shepherd, a shepherd in the film uh, with the, his hat, and it is now with uh, Dita Parlo. Or you know, certainly Dita Parlo, she was very famous at this moment. Uh, Dita Parlo will be. Uh, will have a, a very important role in uh, La Talente by Jean Vigo, certainly, you know, Jean La Talente, uh, La Grande Illusion, Ouvre Noire. And uh, uh, now she's uh, the, one of the most important actors in the, in the film. This is uh, Charles Ferdinand Ramu, Dita Parlo. Uh, so uh, Kirsanov uh, uh, is introducing interesting techniques uh, uh, from the avant-garde. The, the problem of Kirsanov is that he was not completely free, free because uh, uh, the producer was, had uh, some classical uh, options, and, but he tried to reintroduce uh, some techniques uh, from the avant-garde. And here you can see the, uh, the, the attempt to break with the horizontality of the perspective. Again, in the, the, this is an interesting uh, view. The uh, close up is uh, taken from, from the floor. And this is to uh, convey this the, the elemental uh, force of nature uh, uh, in the film. You'll see uh, this is a quite impressive uh, the treatment of stone, uh, rocks, mountain in the in the films. So the mountain has a kind of uh, material participation in the uh, visuality. This is Benjamin Fondan, so he's playing with a cow. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he seems very happy, and he was very happy, in fact. Uh, we have to say, certainly, that Benjamin Fondan will die in 44. He was Jewish, you know, he was arrested in 44 in Paris and he will die in Birkenau. Uh, so uh, uh, he has just uh, some years left. But this period is very happy for Fondan because it was his first real film. And uh, uh, we, we, we've got the correspondence between Fondan and his family. And this moment was uh, uh, very uh, uh, friendly, friendly time. Uh, so you've got here some uh, uh, images of the tournage with Fondan on the left, uh, with Ferdinand Ramu. In fact, Benjamin Fondan, Fondan did the adaptation, but not only. He was helping uh, the 
workers, uh, Ramu, Kirsanov, uh, bringing lamps, uh, uh, etc. So uh, it was not uh, uh, at this time an industrial art. Uh, cinema was a kind of craftsman art. Uh, so they were uh, doing everything. Uh, this is the uh, the, uh, the main place of the uh, story in this film. So it was a very old uh, manoir, a kind of castle of the uh, 12th century. And uh, the house is still there. I was there uh, the three years ago to make a kind of uh, inquiry about the film. And the house is still the same. Uh, this is the madman, Manu. Uh, uh, the, the actor is Romanian, Luca Gridou. Uh, and he, the, the, the character is quite in, in, interesting because we've got this expressionist uh, style of uh, Luca Gridou. Uh, the presence of the madness is very important in this uh, black uh, tragedy. Uh, this is Nadia Sibirskaya. Uh, she was the wife, uh, she was Kirsanov's Kirsanov wife, in fact. She's in black, she is the embodiment of the tragedy. And uh, so after Rapt, uh, Benjamin Fondan will try to do a pure avant-garde film, post-dadaist film. Uh, Benjamin Fondan's uh, uh, dream was to uh, be able to do his film, and he did this film in 36 in Argentina. This famous film is completely lost, and it's Tararira. Uh, Tararira is the, it was the a word, a name of the fish, uh, so no meaning. And he, he did a Tararira like Buñuel uh, did uh, Un Chien de Loup. Uh, Salvador Dali uh, did uh, Un Chien de Loup. So you see uh, Benjamin Fondan on the, on the middle, with the actors, and it is we, we you can understand that the uh, avant-garde film of uh, Fondan, the real film of Benjamin Fondan, Tararira, is completely different. Uh, you've got a kind of play with the baroque, the theater. Uh, it's a pre uh, Fellini film in uh, with. Uh, uh, a kind of eccentricity of the style, humor, irony, etc., etc. So, unfortunately, this film is lost, and we've got only photographs of the of this film and still uh, photographs. But uh, it was a musical, uh, musical film. Uh, I think uh, I've got some time. Oh, yes. So uh, this is uh, Benjamin Fondan again uh, with uh, Maritain, the philosopher, uh, returning in France, coming back in France in '36. And this is uh, Charles uh, Ferdinand Ramu. Uh, so in, uh, Countrymen. Uh, so uh, here, the the, the uh, position in the place of uh, Rapt is a bit exceptional, and uh, even if we if we we've not we've got no uh, surrealism in this film, uh, we've we've got uh, in fact the uh, legacy of uh, some difficulties uh, which were in the avant-garde. The, the real problem, perhaps, of, of the cinematic avant-garde was the sound. 
because the silent film was like a dream. And uh, Benjamin Fondan uh, tried to recreate this cinematic poetry, le poème cinématographique. But uh, the real problem at this moment is the uh, trade, the capitalism of cinema, the audience. And uh, uh, we can feel after 29, between 29 and the 40s, a perpetual fight, a perpetual struggle against the uh, industrial cinema. Uh, if you read the Écrit pour le cinéma of Benjamin Fondan, if you read the correspondence with Kirsanov, uh, the cinema is not an individual creation, of course, it's a collective creation, and uh, it is uh, it was so difficult at this moment uh, to find uh, money to. Uh, Realized this kind of works in uh, in the cinema. Uh, Taharira, for example, uh, had no distribution. The film certainly was so scandalous <laughs> that the producer uh, Miguel Marquinhos Darena in uh, in Buenos Aires decided to keep the film and. Uh, at the end, the film was lost. Uh, it's, it was the same fate for Rapt, because the general audience in Switzerland, uh, Germany, France, England, was not able to understand uh, the music of Oere and uh, Honegger. Uh, so uh, to this evening, you will uh, uh, you, you you can uh, put attention to the tempest in the film. This is the uh, uh, fantastic moment in the film, because Oere and Honegger decided to find a new uh, expression of the tempest with arti completely artificial sounds. They decided to write on the film, on the negative, uh, to create uh, new sounds. Yeah. And they introduced as well the Les Ondes de Martenot, a new musical instrument for the thunder. Yeah. So the, you, you, uh, we will see this evening uh, this uh, new uh, treatment uh, of the sound image uh, or image time uh, to uh, in Deleuzean uh, terms we can say today. So this is uh, wrapped and uh, many thanks uh, for your attention. If you want, if you have questions after the film, I sh will be shall be very pleased to. Uh, uh, to have a, another dialogues and conversation with, with you. Thank you. There's any further questions? I might ask Olivier Salasa Ferrer to turn, come up, and I'll just hand around the microphone. Not so bad. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to add after seeing the film again? Uh, it's quite difficult to have questions, but uh, certainly, uh, just after the the end of the film. So the, I, I think if, if, uh, uh, this copy is excellent uh, because I was very happy to see this quality of uh, visual quality of the film. Uh, so it, it was a, a real pleasure. And 
Uh, yes, the, the end is quite interesting because it is a, a, a full disaster, a visual disaster, you know? and we uh, a catastrophe. And all, all Fondant's films, in fact, uh, end uh, with a disaster and uh, catastrophe. Ta in Tararira as well, uh, at, the, at the end of the film, uh, everything was broken by the actors. <laughs> And it is a quite a metaphor, perhaps, of the history as well, uh, because uh, all this uh, Dadaist and uh, avant-garde generation uh, has the traumatism of the first uh, uh, world war, and uh, we, 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 I think that uh, in uh, several poems uh, of Benjamin Fondane, uh, for example, Titanic, uh, Ulysses. All poems, uh, all of Benjamin Fondan, end with a disaster, uh, uh, ship wreck. Uh, so uh, this is not uh, an exception. <laughs> um, I have a question about um, the time which um, you uh, mentioned um, in your talk a little bit with, with reference uh, to Gilles Deleuze. I think it's very Im Im important um, the time structure in, in the movie because at the very end you s see um, uh, the girl who's running um, all the way down the hill and then there's a point um, when she stops because um, she is not able um, um, to run anymore and the camera moves um, moves on. So it, it, it is, uh, there are very much scenes in the movie which uh, try to show that the time uh, goes by um, even if the characters um, are not able um, um, to, to perceive it um, anymore or um, they have no uh, consciousness um, anymore. So can you say a little bit more about um, um, the structure um, of, of time um, in the movie? Uh. I think you are perfectly right. This, this is, a, a, the f I think, one of the first films uh, where we've got a, ca a kind of subjective uh, translation of uh, the different psychological uh, states of the characters. And uh, Arthur Weyre and Honegger try to, uh, yes, to translate in a sound image a subjective sound image with the pace of the movements in the cutting, and the cutting is very important, and the rhythm of cutting uh, is um, uh, doubling the music. So we've got uh, 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 the, trans the, the translation of the subjective uh, uh, events is at the same time uh, in sound and image. So you you are perfectly right uh, on the road on the, the clock as well. Eh? Provide uh, another base of the images, uh, the fountain. So the uh, Oire and Oneger in dialogue with Ramu were looking for also a kind of material. Uh, sound of uh, the action. Uh, it was very modern. Uh, we can, you can think to Deleuze, but also Merleau-Ponty. Uh, uh, it was very uh, modern, but uh, uh, at this time, it was, it, it, the audience had some difficulties to accept that. Even if Oire and Odeguer published uh, in La Revue Musicale, there was a special issue uh, in 36, I think, of La Revue Musicale. And this uh, journal uh, was completely devoted to the film. And Arthur Royre and Honegger provided a full analysis of this attempt. Uh, uh, yes. And at the same time, so Benjamin Fondan published uh, several papers, very interesting philosophical papers, on the new relation the new possibility uh, of relationship between the sound and the image, yes. Maybe one of the strongest impressions of subjectivism in the film is the scene when when the dancing in the village takes place. And uh, you, you see the people turning around in the tact or turn of the music 
But on the same time, you see it through the eyes of the main character who is totally devastated and who has... But the music layer tells about his emotions and not about the the music from the dancing just stops in this moment. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, uh, when I was in the village uh, uh, five years ago, I, I, I st stood uh, in uh, three weeks in the lens in this village, and uh, of course it was impossible to to find uh, uh, actors of, of the film because uh, they were too old. But uh, some people, uh, the, the priest of the village, uh, was able to remember the bells, the work in the ta in the church because you see the, the real bells of the church of the village. And uh, uh, there was a carillon as well. So the Kirsanov uh, explored the village to find also some sound, real sounds in the, in the village. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the all images of the tragedy, of course, the bells uh, and the leg. Uh, of the, this uh, old man, uh, of course, the, these sounds are co are completely false. Uh, they are they are recreated uh, by uh, Arturo Eri and Oneguer. <laughs> Hello, um, I just wanted to ask briefly. Uh, you mentioned in your talk that. Um, the composers employed as a technique writing directly onto the film. Uh, I wanted to ask if that, as far as you know, is uh, an unprecedented experimental technique for creating sound, or if there were other films of that time that the composers, or indeed anybody else, uh, experimented with that technique uh, on. I think it was uh, one of the first uh, the experiments, of course, yes, OERE, if you are interested in this, uh, the description of Arturo Eri, uh, you have to read this, uh, this paper. Eh? Uh, La Partition Musicale de Rapt by Arturo Eri. Mm -hmm. There is a, this paper was published in, uh, I think, in 35. And uh, they, they had, so they, there, is, there was uh, several techniques. Uh, they decided to... Uh, to uh, work on the uh, on the, uh, the 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 sound track itself. So the, the, uh, I don't know exactly because uh, uh, it, today is quite difficult to find uh, the original uh, sound track, but uh, we've got the, the script of the film as well. Uh, the script is available at the Cinémathèque Française. And uh, you can you have uh, some indications uh, about the, the, the work on the, on the sound. So you, if you are interested uh, in this uh, topic, you can see the uh, script of the film written uh, by uh, Kirsanov. But uh, they try also something else. They decided to uh, record some uh, pieces of uh, music and to reverse the track. And uh, they put the uh, reverse recording of, of some piece of the track in the, in the film. I think it is during the Tempest. Uh, you've got a very bizarre sound and they are the result of this uh, uh, bizarre operation on the on the on the track. But uh, I don't know. So Oire is uh, explaining that, but we don't know exactly. Uh, uh, it would be interesting to to explore. Yes, uh, what kind of work exactly they did on the on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. If there is no more question, I would say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all for coming and have a pleasant rest of the evening. On Sunday evening, yeah. <laughs>